there's something about these afternoon games, man. Not even afternoon. Afternoon in New Jersey. Morning here. You telling me I got up at 10 a.m. to watch that? Really? Huh. Okay, so... It's the Hughes versus the Hughes showdown, and the Vancouver Canucks just lost one nothing. Mackenzie Blackwood with the shutout again. The guys only had two career shutouts in the NHL, and they've both been against Vancouver? Really? Really? Okay. But this one was a one nothing shutout win. You don't need me to tell you. Hughes got the goal. The other Hughes, by the way, not the Vancouver Canucks Hughes, Jack Hughes gets the power play marker on a very nice setup by Taylor Hall. He gets a nice shot on. Demko is out of position because it's a cross-crease pass. You know, he can't really go that quickly. Hughes gets his first on the year. It's the only goal of the game. That's it. Game review over. Hope you enjoyed this video. Social Dash Rolls 99. And bye. All right. So this game is... Weird. Really weird. Really, really weird. The Canucks had some really good power plays, they had some really bad power plays, and overall a lot of their players just weren't on point today. Quinn Hughes, I want to say he looked pretty good, it's just that everything that he did in his power was not enough to really support the Canucks in the best way, especially because the rest of the Canucks weren't all too hot either. I want to call out Pedersen first. Man, get a shot on net. Petey, what are you doing? He was hesitating so much in this game, and there were so many opportunities on the power play, on the five on five, in the offensive zone where he just stood there, tried to pick his spot, and he would always shoot it wide. Petey, there's something wrong with Petey this year, at least in this game. The confidence wasn't there like we saw with Petey last year. And his point streak is broken up. All the point streaks are broken up. No goals in this one because Mackenzie freaking Blackwood gets another shutout. And overall, I want to go through the roster here too. Hughes we talked about. He was pretty good. Petey, my goodness, man. He has to hit the net. Edler. Let's talk about Alex Edler for a little bit. There was a little bit of hesitation on the part of Alex Edler throughout this game, and a lot of Edler's plays weren't necessarily all too tenacious. There was a lot of caution on the part of Alexander Edler. In the 6-on-5 at the end of the game, there were a few moments where Edler had the opportunities to shoot, but he elected to hold it off a little bit, killing some more time. Eventually, when he did shoot it, it would get blocked. New Jersey would send the other, the other way, and that would be the end of the play. Now, New Jersey, getting those shot blocks, they did get a lot of shot blocks. So many blocked shots for the Devils in this game, and it was frustrating to watch as a Canucks fan. They did a really good job shutting down the Canucks and playing the trap game. It was almost like that classic 1-3-1 in the neutral zone, where the Canucks were forced every single time to dump it in because New Jersey would just clog up the middle. It's an effective play style, and quite frankly, it's a very boring style of hockey to play. And in my opinion, it's the ultimate catalyst for what ends up being a New Jersey 1-0 win. Now, 1-0 wins can be close. 1-0 wins, they can be tight, they can be intense. But this game was far from intense. This game was just boring, thorough and thorough. And a lot of the two teams really didn't have the best opportunities to get goals. Petey hit a crossbar, yeah. And we had a few other great chances to tie the game up. But for the most part, this game, majority speaking, it was really boring. And I don't know if I want to get up for a game like this again tomorrow. The Vancouver Canucks had a pretty good showing sometimes, but not most of the time. JT Miller looked tenacious once in a while. He had some pretty good shots, but nothing too special. Tyler Myers had a pretty good opportunity here and there, but for the most part, he was ineffective as well. Thatcher Demko was good for most of the game, but as I said, one goal gets past you, but that's all it takes to lose a game. Bo Horvat won some face-offs, he had some chances, Brock Besser I thought looked better than the majority of the Canucks forwards, he had some pretty good looks as well, but again, nothing to the net that was super dangerous. 
all in all, just not too effective of a game for the Vancouver Canucks. And you could really tell there were some power plays where the Canucks were just all over the New Jersey Devils. And the one in the middle of the second period, Quinn Hughes took so many shots that were blocked, you could tell he really wanted to score a goal there. But Quinn Hughes was setting up his teammates. They were getting one-timers. Petey, again, he was hesitating, and it really wasn't something that was effective. But one power play in the second period was so good that they could have honestly scored three or four goals on that power play. However, as the game went on, the power play just wasn't all too great in general. The power play at the third period, where they had a chance to tie up the game, was so ineffective, so dull, so lifeless, that it was just New Jersey sending it out the entire time. This is not the team that we saw win four games in a row. This is not the same team that we saw take charge over LA 8-2. This is a different team that just got the life sucked out of them, and I don't know if it was the travel, if it was the early start time, if it was whatever, but this team needs to find a way to bounce back against the Rangers tomorrow. Thatcher Demko wasn't bad in this game. He only let in one goal, but still... Whatever happens in this game, it cannot translate into the Rangers game tomorrow, because if that happens, the Vancouver Canucks are going to go on a two-game losing streak. This was not a good one, period, and it's very highlighted by the fact that the Canucks were 0 for 7 on the power play. You can't have seven chances on the man advantage and still not score at least one on Mackenzie Blackwood. And that's not disrespectful to Blackwood, it's just that he's not an amazing, amazing, amazing goaltender. Sure, he's really good whenever he plays Vancouver, but Blackwood, he's only at an 8.57 save percentage and a 4.06 goals against average this year. That is not a goalie that should be shutting out this Canucks team. Now, it's been one game, yeah. It's the third loss on the year. Am I overreacting? Maybe. Am I cranky because I had to wake up at 10 a.m. to watch this game when I could have woken up at 1 p.m. instead like I usually do? Maybe. But what I do know is that this Canucks team is better than that. This Canucks team was better than the performance that we put on here today. And sure, the Devils played a pretty solid game. I will say that they did shut down the play. Jack Hughes, although he wasn't all too dangerous on the 5-on-5, five five, he was dangerous on the power play for sure. He got a goal. Blake Coleman was all over this game. I was noticing the guy everywhere, and not just when Edler got that hit on him. By the way, let's talk about that a little bit. Alexander Edler gets a little bit of a... A nice elbow, shoulder to the head on Coleman, and it's really ugly, but for the most part, Coleman's coming in, and he's really, really low. He's low on the play, he's swooping in, Edler's just kinda there, he can't really avoid the hit all too much. I can understand why Edler wasn't ejected from the game or whatever, I don't think that's a suspension by any means. I think the guy just ran into Edler in an unfortunate way that provided a pretty solid elbow or shoulder to the head there. I don't think that's malicious on Edler's part, but at the same time I can understand why people would be frustrated at that. I can understand why people would be frustrated at Edler this entire game, the guy just wasn't all too great. Quinn Hughes was put onto the first power play, and when it was put onto that first power play, that's when that amazing shift happened, where they were so dynamic, so lethal, and ultimately ineffective. But Quinn Hughes ultimately loses the first battle of the Hughes versus the Hughes brother here, and I think it's the second time they've actually played. Yeah, last year, the Michigan Wolverines played the USNTDP U18 team, and that's where Jack Hughes and the U18s won, so... Yeah, Quinn Hughes is 0 for 2 against his brother Jack, I guess, but we'll see what happens later. I believe November 10th is when the Canucks play the Devils again at Rogers Arena, something like that. But it's almost poetic in a way, seeing Jack Hughes get his first NHL goal against Quinn Hughes, seeing Quinn Hughes try so hard to get a goal to set up an offensive chance for the Vancouver Canucks, but ultimately fall unsuccessful. But this game was just frustrating to watch. It's a Hughes versus Hughes battle. That was kind of fun to watch, but the game in general? Nah, I didn't like that. And I don't know. I just kind of want to get this one over with and get the next quick start underway with New York tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed this video. Social Dash 9.
and bye.